You're listening to The Real. With Rachel D. on Atlanta's inspirational talk radio, Love 860. Hey, everybody, and welcome to The Real with Rachel D. This is your girl, Rachel D. I'm so glad you guys decided to join me again this Friday. We have some special guests in the house and a special girl on the phone. Miss BJ is joining us from Huntsville, Alabama. Hey, BJ. Hey, girl. Oh, my gosh. This is our first time doing it remote, so I'm happy that, you know, you're here and going to do some celebrity gossip with us. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. So we have a couple seat warmers, some people in the studio joining us. We have Mr. Cash Carter on the mic. Well, hello, what? y'all. This is my first time here. Lies. Okay. <laughs> and uh, our super producer extraordinaire, Mr. Patrick. Hey, what's up? I'm glad you guys decided to join us. Uh, welcome. Happy New Year's, guys. Happy New Year. Oh, yeah. Happy New Year. Yeah. First show for 2016. Woohoo! So, BJ, how's it going in Alabama? It is going great. I have not committed any crimes, and I am good to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we miss you, girl. We miss you. All right. So, we'll go ahead and get started. So, we definitely want to give a shout-out and congratulations to Candy Burris and um, Todd Tucker from the Real Housewives of Atlanta, who delivered a healthy baby this week. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. No name uh, or no clue of what the name is yet, but I'm pretty sure, you know, they're very big on social media. So we'll be seeing some pictures and some names. So I'm super excited for her because, you know, they've wanted this baby for so long. So congratulations right. to them. And this is, I believe, the first kid between them, right? Yes, it is. They both have yeah. daughters and now they have one son. Oh, wow. All right. So moving on to some Atlanta celebrity news. Did you guys hear about Future going in on Sierra on um, Twitter? Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that. So for the people who haven't, um, his tweets went as follows. And I'll try to be you know, careful to catch the bleeps. Um, it says, I just want baby future. That's all. I got to go through lawyers to see my baby future. The effery for 15K a month. This bleach got control problems. I've been silent for a year and a half. I ran out of patience. I'm the real deal. No fake, no floggy. Oh, for the cameras. So, Mm -hmm. everybody knew who, um, you know, he was talking to. So, what do you guys think about that? His baby mom. You know, Future is so messy. He has had issues ever since Sierra hooked up with her new boot. Yeah, I think that's, I really think that that's kind of what it is. He's all hurting in his feelings. I mean, he needs to get over it. What do you think, Cash? Uh, I think he's right, man, because you said 15K a month. Yeah. Yeah, he has a right to be a little upset about him not... What's the problem, though? Apparently, Sierra's not allowing him to see his son. 15K a month for not allowing to see my son. Yeah, I'm I'm going on Twitter, too. But why go on Twitter, though? I mean, you just said you're going on Twitter, but why? Why? I'm going to ask you, why would you go on Twitter, though? What does that solve? Going on Twitter, what is arguing? What is arguing in 150 characters or less? What is it? 144, I think. 144 characters or less. What does that solve? Right. Let me tell you what it solves. It it puts the people on your side. It's all about the power of the people with the celebrity. But only two people went into making that baby. Oh, but everybody else. Exactly. Okay, but where is that baby? See, that baby's only with one person now. That baby ain't with both of them now. But look, Future has four kids by four different women. Oh, we can't do that. We can. How come he's not hounding any of the other baby mamas about this? Because look at the... Because he ain't paying 15000 for them. He had other kids by some broke people. This is the only celebrity baby he got. (laughs) Yeah, and look at the last... Read that last tweet that he said. What does it say? I'm the real deal. No fake, no flogging for the cameras. See? That's what he's saying. He's not doing all that cameras. Like, Sierra's out with the baby every... If you're on Twitter, though, isn't it all for the cameras? Thank you. No, and you know what? I, I, Somebody posted characters. something on social media, and I agree. They said that if Sierra was with Fetty Wap or some other rap artist that Future was selling more records than and being better than, he wouldn't care. But the fact is, Russell Wilson is a multi-million dollar um, quarterback, is getting invites to the White House. He probably thought Sierra was some basic chick, and she's proven him wrong. She's upgraded, and you can't tell me hey. he ain't a little butt hurt off that. 
That's true. I mean, she getting an invite to the White House. Future yeah. only get invited to the trap house. He jealous. So y'all, so y'all, so so basically, y'all saying the man shouldn't want to see his child. No, I'm not. No, nobody is saying that. I, I mean, but that's the... I feel like this, like Patrick was saying, why go to Twitter? Like she didn't move to like Seattle. Mars. She moved to Seattle. It's almost you Mars. could. You are a rich celebrity who probably has access to private planes. If you want to go to her house and see that child, if you're paying 15 grand a month, I'm assuming that this might be court related. You can get custody if you want to. What it is is that you are in your feelings because you see another man taking more pictures and, and taking care of your child more than you are. And people are probably making him feel bad about it. Mm-hmm. I'm saying you're grown. You both have a kid together. You, He's got five kids together. Go to court. Don't go to Twitter. Well, how, well, how do we know that he's he didn't try to call Sierra already? How do we know? See, we're just blaming the court. future. Yeah. He she can't run court. from that. She already went to court. What? I mean, you and can always appeal. Yeah, if she's not letting you see your child and the court says you can, then she's out of line and you go right. back to court and they'll fix it. Okay, so you know what I'm going to hold each of us accountable for? What? We should not, if I see any of y'all on social media saying anything that relationship-wise, I'm going to, all I'm going to say is future. I'm going to hashtag your name. <laughs> I'm going to hashtag future right behind <laughs> it. Because I'm going to let y'all know that sometimes, you sometimes that's what Twitter's all about, getting in your feelings, right? Yeah, and I, I am definitely the queen of See? the sub messages when I'm in my feelings. So See? I'm not saying that he shouldn't have went to Twitter. What I'm saying is that he is but hurt yes. off of the fact that he screwed up. He cheated on her or whatever the rumors were that ended their relationship. And she upgraded like in a sense she should. Upgraded. Like right. she, but at the same time, accountability people, like you had a baby with um, how many kids? You had a baby with a man with four other kids. <laughs> like, if he didn't take care of them, he probably wasn't going to take care of yours. You but know, that's dirty. See? See how see how we doing? He misspelled just. <laughs> what? He's a ra- <laughs> now, he's a rapper. Let's not get like, Come on now. <laughs> Wait, how do you spell it? J-U-S. There's no T on it. Uh-oh. I mean, but you got to, you got to, you know, you got to kind of shorten up the words for, for you only have 140, 140 characters, so right. you got to shorten up some of the If you look at it, he wasn't using all This is a period at the end of that. You could have, you had room for that oh. T, I'm saying. See, I see what y'all doing. So you're saying if you're going to go to Twitter, at least do it right. Right. See, those, those mm-hmm. tweets just prove Don't why tweet she me with improper right. grammar. I'm a future Are you one of those people, Patrick, right. going to come I back? I will send it back. <laughs> Resubmit. All right. All y'all going to get future. Wait till I see y'all social, social media stuff. Future. All right. Well, speaking of social media, um, have you guys heard about the whole situation with Tyga and this alleged 14-year-old girl he was texting? Oh, yeah. Now, let me tell you, if you have never went and read the comment sections, you have to. People are hilarious because, you know, everybody knows Tyga was messing with Kylie Jenner before she turned 18. And actually, they said she was about 16. I think it was a lot further than that. Because back in the day when I was a Keeping Up with Kardashian fan, I remember she had like a 15th birthday, and Tyga was actually the artist that performed. And I remember exactly. saying, I love Tyga. He's a close friend of mine, blah, blah, blah. So I think maybe, you know, that stuff happened a lot earlier. But anyways, he's in the media because a 14-year-old aspiring model, um, OK Magazine had accused her of having some type of inappropriate relationship or having a relationship with Tyga. And um, she decided to take to the media with the celebrity um, lawyer, do a little crying and tearing. Did y'all see her press conference? And, uh, yeah, she said that she felt a little uncomfortable with him asking to FaceTime her. Mm-mm. And did y'all, she doesn't she kind of look like a like Dollar General or Great Value version of Kylie? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> she sure does. You know, yes, she does actually. But a lot prettier though. Mm-hmm. I won't even say um, Dollar General version. She's pretty, but she, she is looks she's very pretty. But she's also very very underage. Yeah, but she's she um there were screen grabs of their messages back and forth, and she did say that she was seventeen in her message to Tyga. Ooh. Okay, see, see, so we can't really blame him too, too much. Exactly. But 17 is still kind of young. He's like, well, how old is he, 26? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's What is his deal with teenagers? Exactly. I mean, that's, you know, that's Hollywood, right? Yep. It's somebody's Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, I have to say, I'm not a fan of Tyga whatsoever, but I have to have his back on this. 
Well, just just a little bit. Like he said, he was scouting her because she's a well-known 14-year-old model and musician. And so apparently he saw her dance videos and he was scouting, which people do nowadays. They go on social media and scout. She didn't have to lie about her age because she knew who Tiger was. So that's kind right. of the little motive right there. If you really want to be a model and be an actress or whatever, be who you are. Say who you are. Back in the modeling world, they start out at 12 and 13. So that was perfect for you. Tiger hit you up and you was like, I'm 17. Why? Because Kylie was 17? Like, you you were looking for something. And, um, you know, her little crying and stuff, whatever. Bye, girl. But at the she same time. She knew what she was doing. Yeah. All right. So, uh, this is one thing I want BJ to take the role on. You were telling me about Bill Cosby's new lawyer. You said she's a Yes. Uh, Bill Cosby has hired uh, his new lawyer. Her name is Monique Presley. This woman is a Howard alumni, and she is whooping butts and taking names in the media right now. So currently she is representing Bill Cosby in all of his uh, TV appearances, interviews, and she is giving these um, interviewers a run for their money, y'all. Oh, I saw so, it. I saw yeah. one of them. It was good. She do not play. She's like that mom when you say you're going out, she want to know what time, when the movie ends, how long you going to be there. I mean, she does not leave anything, anything for them to jump in and try to, to add on to the story. So, You know, it's so funny. When I saw her interview, that's the first thing I thought. I thought Black Mama. Like exactly. This, when your mama be like backing you in the corner, like you can't say nothing, like she knows everything, the answer to everything. That's how she was. And, it, and mm-hmm. she, she didn't even break a sweat. She kind of had that little Black Mama attitude, but that's what I like. Yeah. Thing, uh, so, what? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, the only well, thing I'm just saying, she—he—I don't know how much he's paying her, but he's getting his money's worth. Oh yeah. No, go ahead, Cash. I said no. The only thing I know about this lawyer is that I think she was like Lindsay Lohan's lawyer before. Was she? Yeah. Research. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she knows. She knows the game. So For that's a crime? good thing. Hmm? For what crime? Wait, that kind of makes me have another question. Do you think the representation kind of has to do with because the lawyers, the lawyer who's representing the women in the Bill Cosby case, she's the same lawyer who is representing this 14 year old girl about um, Tyga. Who was holding Are you her. serious? Yeah, who was holding her. She's a celebrity uh, judge, like a celebrity lawyer. She's known. She's actually, I think, trying to prosecute Lindsay Lohan or whatever. She she was dealing with her first. So she's one of those. That's why, honestly, with the women, it depends on who they are. I feel like your representation, that kind of makes me judge you a little bit. This woman is known for jumping on scandals. And the fact that when I saw her, the 14-year-old, she had her arm around and dabbing away the tears. Well, couldn't the same be said for Bill Cosby's lawyer if she, in fact, did represent Lindsay Lohan? Well, she quit Lindsay when Lindsay kept acting a fool. So to me, she, she knows boundaries. So well, she might have right. been. This case is fresh. And also, I got to do my research on that, Cash. I'm not saying you're not telling the truth, but the lady to me look a lot older. This one look a lot fresh, but you might be right. All right, guys, so you're listening to The Real with Rachel D, and I'm here with Mr. Patrick, Cash Carter, and Miss BJ on remote in Alabama. And I just want to give a quick reminder for you guys to go on social media and show us some support on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Coming up, we have Erica Badu and Andre3000. Hello. All right, guys, welcome back to The Real with Rachel D. I am being joined with Cash Carter. Yeah, about to blow up. Mr. Patrick. I'm still here. Miss BJ, are you there? I still am here, girl. I paid my bill. I'm ready. Ride to die, girl. Well, you know you had until midnight, so you good. Okay. All right, so we want to talk about um, Patrick's biological father, Matthew Knowles. If only. I mean, it could, it could <laughs> be. I mean, he made half of Beyonce, so... <laughs> Shoot. I want I want Joe Jackson. You oh, yeah. you do? <laughs> As an estranged father. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll take Matthew Noel. Well, you know what? No. Because looking at this picture of one of his baby mamas, he doesn't make good judgment. You go from sure does not. Mama Tina to these two. Joe Jackson makes pretty babies is all I'm saying. So. He does make pretty babies. Okay. Mm-hmm. Except for Jermaine. Well, yeah. You know, they got it has to be that one. Right. And he's that one. 
All right, so Matthew Knowles is back in the media because, as we know, for the last two years, just baby after baby has been popping up into the media. And um, his last child, who was with this stripper lady, I swear I'll get her name. Her name is uh, Takoya Branscombe. Branscombe, I think that's how you say it. Um, He has a five-year-old daughter with her, and the courts have said that he now has to pay back child support child support his uh wages are going to be garnished so he has to pay her a little over seventy thousand dollars yes and along with regular monthly child support of almost fifteen hundred dollars a month plus um the child's health insurance and her fifty thousand dollar legal fees Uh Mm. do matthew even got money like that still he says he doesn't that's why he said he, he wasn't trying to pay the child support but he did happen to give her two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars in hush money. Right. Mm. Well, if he had went down and put child support on himself before that, he wouldn't have had to do that. I'm so. Thank you, because if you add all them numbers up, that's your two hundred and twenty-something uh, thousand dollars you gave her. Now you got to give her another amount. Mm. But it was exactly. his way of, I guess, trying to skip out on his responsibilities because Matthew just embarrassed the family. You remember when Beyonce, the whole family, you just didn't know anything about them. It was just they were so <laughs> quiet and family and mysterious. And it was his monkey behind that had to go wreck everything. Is Matthew even part of the family anymore? Don't nobody talk to him. It's just they kinda... don't. Yeah, that's right. In fact, all the women went and got married to so like, look, you have your last name, too. <laughs> like, we don't even want any part of you. Cash, and that's crazy. You that looking so a little crazy. weird. You don't have side baby syndrome, do you? No, I'm just feeling this is, this is becoming a male bashing show. I, I, I'm just not going to agree with anything, so I'm just going to. That is away. not true. <laughs> yeah, it is. Tell me how this is male bashing. He, future. Okay, that's future. Look, Matthew knows. These how are, is? How's a, these are well established men in the industry, and you guys are really killing them about back child support. Future wanted to pay his money, right? But now Matthew, he can't pay his money. Well, why are we bashing these? Let's bring Matthew Knowles to us. Bring him on the Rachel D show and let him explain what happened. Because we're just taking one side. Yeah, of I agree with Cash. See, I, I love you. <laughs> See, but I'm not bashing him. When Matthew went and got tilapia knocked up or whatever her name is, <laughs> he knew he was still married. Exactly. So, I mean, if personal responsibility comes into play, but at the same time, is he trying to shirk all his responsibility or is he just flat out broke? Right. If you were that well established, then paying child support shouldn't be an issue. I exactly. Mean, I don't think he has a problem playing with those child support, the 1500 a month. I think it's all that back pay that he has to pay and then the additional. Keep all your business under one roof. More hey, of the story. Or wrap it up. Like, I'm sorry, and no judgment to these women. And I know this, apparently, this stripper right here has changed her life <laughs> around. Stripper? This stripper, what does she look like to you? She She's a stripper. a stripper. Well, once a stripper, always a stripper, especially when no, that's I'm not, the, I'm, the I'm, picture I'm, circulating. It's like, I mean, look, this man was married. I mean, whatever. Men, people are going to do what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. But when you go from Tina Knowles, who is as gorgeous as she is, even though she's been a little nut, mm-hmm. nipped and tucked lately, a little bit too mm-hmm. much, and you go to that, like, homegirl was looking for a come up. Unfortunately, Beyonce don't cut that off. And it's like you are in court trying to get back child support. Like, you did not knock, or he did not knock up the right one or whatever. But he shouldn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I'm going to be honest. Beyonce, mama, like, she don't do nothing. She just lay there. I don't, I'm, not, I'm just trying to say. That I, just, DJ, mm. that's where I was going. I was headed that way, but <laughs> I wanted to keep this Christian, so I didn't say that. <laughs> DJ. <laughs> I'm just saying, she just like she just lay there and be like, "Come on, Matt, hurry up! I got this cornmeal. I gotta cook. Come on now." Yeah, so yeah. she's not praying right. Prayers up. You know what? No, no, I don't. I disagree. There's a reason why Beyonce can dance as good as she does. Because of her daddy. Her daddy got to move. Did you see her dance on her wedding day? The mama, she was slow stepping. I mean, she don't look like she. Uh, I'm just. I think he wanted somebody who could really work with it. Ew. She she shows Desiree. What's her name? D- Demonic. What's her name? What's the girl's name? Her, you said Tilapia. Uh, yeah, Tilapia. Her yeah. Tilapia. Her name is Tacoya. Okay. Oh, Coy. T- yeah, Tacoma. <laughs> Tacoma. <laughs> Looks like she got a little move, a little pep in the step. So I feel Matthew. Matthew, I'm with you. Y'all, Matthew knows kind of look like my daddy in this picture. <laughs> I'll do a DNA test. I'll be half Beyonce's sister. <laughs> But no, see, that's mm-hmm. another thing right there. If you were Beyonce and Solange, yeah. which is another thing, they always say, they always point to Beyonce. Like, they forget that Solange is part of the family, too. She's a sister. 
How do you how do you handle that? You know, that is your just your, the way that she's doing right now. Keep moving on with your yeah. life. I mean, forever though. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, you're right. Do you think who's, who's 34 and got time for extra siblings? I don't know. That's I don't a have good time question. for that. But do you not think not a two-year-old? Oh, she's not a five. toddler. Yeah. But do you think that the child will ever grow up and kind of understand? If that makes sense. Ooh. Where it's like, this is why. You know, Beyonce, the world famous superstar, didn't want anything to do with me. It wasn't me personally, but my dad busted up, you know, their marriage and all that stuff. Or do you think that the child wouldn't matter? Um, well, that child's going to grow up being Beyonce's, what is it, a son or a daughter? It's, he has two, one a boy and a girl. So they're going to be grow up Beyonce's brother and Beyonce's sister. They're not going to be known as the Knowles children. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, they can get famous off that, just live off that. Yep. I mean, they want to feel like it's what it feels like to be an outcast. They can definitely reach out to the X Men with the Destiny Child. <laughs> BJ, I love you so much. All right, let's move on real quick because somebody actually specially wanted us to talk about this. So, have you guys heard about the North Carolina Powerball winner who won um, $88 million lump sum and she's already spent $12 million getting belling her boyfriend in and out, in and out, and in and out of jail? Yeah. Like it wasn't like his bail was twelve Powell million Bale and then she winner. paid it. It was he went to jail, I'm gonna put two million to bail him out. He goes back to jail, he's another two million, and it all sums up to twelve million dollars. What was he yep. doing to be bailed out of jail for two million? To have his bail set at two million. I don't know. Like is it murder? Oh, I got you, Patrick, I got you. Okay. Oh, okay. So this dude was involved in drugs, assault charges, high weapon armed charges. So, I mean, like, he's terrorizing the community. Well, or, or he's trying to protect her, protect her money. Think about it, all those thieves trying to get her. So he's like, I'm out trying to protect you, baby. And then he just get caught with the weapons. No. Okay. Mm, I don't okay, think okay. so. So I guess the, I mean, here's the thing. Yes, it's her money. I personally feel like there's more deserving people, like us, for instance. In fact, you yes. know, don't even give me 88 mil. Just give me one mil, girl, we're good to go, and then you would have given back to the society. <laughs> but you keep, you spent, that has been like maybe almost 10% of your winnings on, you just gave it back to the justice system because he keeps getting put back in jail because he keeps either doing the same thing over and over again or he's in the process of a trial. Oh, wait, so she yeah. still has more. She's only spent 12 million, but she still has more of it. Yeah. Left. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought she spent everything. Yeah. Okay. No, no oh, she got awarded. She originally got awarded 188 million. But you know how we do when we get it. She didn't want to get the monthly. She settled for the one lump sum, which dropped her down to 88 million. So oh. 88 million minus the 12 million in bail, she's sitting right around 60. Oh, she's broke. She's gonna be. <laughs> oh, she's broke. No, I think that she's gonna be. And she spent yeah. it very. It says that um, she's posted from last year three million dollars bond back in March, six million dollars bond in July, and then another uh, amount uh, a couple months ago. That's a lot of money. And I guess if you have it, it's like a drop in a bucket. But really, do you think that if once you go broke, homeboy is gonna be there? I doubt it. Like if I, I was the man there. and I really loved that woman, I wouldn't even let her do that. I'd be like, babe. I let me go to jail. You put that money in some nice houses, put that money on my books or whatever. Don't spend that on this because so we're not done. He keeps getting bailed out. Does he keep getting acquitted? No, they he, haven't. No, he still has to serve. Oh. Yep. Oh, yeah. You're right. Leave him in jail. Yeah, I definitely want to leave him in jail. All right, guys, you're listening to The Real with Rachel D. here at Mr. Patrick Cash Carter and Miss BJ on the line. Just a quick mm -hmm. reminder, again, social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, SoundCloud. Give us some support on The Real with Rachel D. Coming up, we have Chris Brown, Liquor. I'll go to work eating, just eat Popeye's chicken. Mm. All right, guys, Popeye's chicken with uh, Cash Carter. This is The Real with Rachel D, and that was Chris Brown Liquor. We're over here talking about um, what will we do if we won the lottery like um, Homegirl did. Of course, I'm in studio with Cash Carter, uh, Mr. Patrick, and Miss BJ on the phone. Yay! What would you do, girl, if you won that money? Well, first, I would have to donate to a charity um, and break my friends off. Of course, the charity is uh, Bad Weeds United. 
<laughs> it's so many black women running around slapping their heads, child. I mean, it's so much migraine medicine, so I'm going to donate to that. And then, you know, from there, I'm bouncing. I understand that. You know what? If you won the BJ, if you the BJ, if you won the lottery, Miss BJ, <laughs> because I know you and your work situation, I would go with you on your last day at work. I just feel like it'd be amazing, girl. I, it would be hilarious. I would probably walk up and throw glitter on people's like keyboards. Just something that's going to take them a while to, <laughs> to clean up <laughs> and be mad at me. All right, guys. I'm sorry. We're being silly. That's what we were talking about during the um, during the break. What will we won? Because, you know, the um, Powerball is up to over 500. It's half a billion dollars. Like, just give me a fraction of it. Just see. I'm serious. I, my life will be changed forever. Okay. So, moving on. Um, so, WTH social media. Have you guys seen this video that's been circulating around social media of um, a – Starbucks employee who apparently took um, a customer's credit card, made copy of it, and then charged two hundred dollars worth of groceries on I, Facebook. I saw that. Yep. You see? Mm-hmm. I haven't seen that, but wow. She did, and the lady came back to the Starbucks and checked her to death. Like that girl was <laughs> terrified. She was a yes. young girl too, like teenager. Mm-hmm. So my whole thing is, with the security the way it is, because I don't know if you guys got your credit cards and debit cards replaced where they had a the little chip in it that you got to use to insert, but how right. do you uh, make a copy of somebody's credit card and then use it on a, in a grocery store? She said she wrote down the number in the video, so I don't right. know if, like... But how can you do that, though? I don't know. I, maybe well, she was shopping online, or... Yeah. Well, you that know, have y'all ever been in line behind somebody who say swipe it again, then they wrap it up in the grocery bag and try and swipe it, <laughs> and it still don't work, and then they just enter it in? I think she did one of those. Or unless she had a friend that's working at the grocery store that just enter in the number. That's a good one. That's look at, true. Look not saying cash. that I don't understand they, this. They do take your number, though. I've done that before. Mm-hmm. Just called in and said, hey, take this number, and um, they'll put it in there for you. But yeah, homegirl drove right up to um, the customer or to the employee and checked her. Mm-hmm. It was all on video. It was pretty intense. Uh, yep, she was yeah, like, "Cut her out." Yeah, she said, um, I, "I'm going to say I hope that the hundred and twelve dollars was worth it of groceries yesterday because I'm filing a bleeping police report and your corporate already knows about it." So, mm-hmm. gosh, <laughs> Jesus. She was like, I'm sorry that I took money from, or the, actually the girl said, this is so funny. You have to watch it. It's so pathetic. Like, I know she's so young and everything, but she kept going back and forth. It reminded me of when you were a kid and you get in trouble and then you're halfway between admitting you did it and then apolo- and then no, denying she it. She all the way came out and said she did it. She was just like. <laughs> she did, but towards the end, she was like, I, I didn't, I didn't. like." She, she tried was, to catch herself. Yeah. That just reminded me so much of being a little kid. So she apologizes. She said, I'm sorry that I took money from you and your kids. I'm sorry that that you had to come up here. I'm sorry that this is inconvenient inconvenience for you. That line right there, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. That is such customer service. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, customer service. I think she offered her a free Starbucks too, didn't she? I think that's what happened in the video. She did. I think that's, so. that's good though. That's still good she still had good uh-uh. customer service skills. Yeah. And she says, I, I swear I'm really good. Order, like, I mean, how come when you have jumped through the window if it was your money, though? Yes. Under, you know, it's so sad. Did y'all see that other video where Homegirl got pulled out of the drive through window over, yeah, like, if she didn't get enough ketchup or something like that? Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> so somebody stole $200 worth of you. You was good, girl. You were calm. Exactly. I think I would have just walked in there. No drive through for you. I'm about to check you in front of everybody. <laughs> okay. I'm about to get me a grande butt whooping with a side of no chill right now. <laughs> And then I would have got real crazy. I'm like, now get over there and make up, make my creme brulee. And you better not burn the milk either. <laughs> yes. They burn the milk when you make stuff <laughs> like that sometimes. Anyway, so moving on. Another story that's been on social media that is about people stealing stuff. People are stealing money like people will not figure this out, guys. Come on now. So a woman played, paid for plastic surgery and dental work on stolen credit card information. Yes. Child. It was, but no, it wasn't just one race. It was like a crew. It was like eleven women, right? Yes, eleven women did that, and they got breast implants and gold teeth. Man, so it was a group of flat-chested, <laughs> just mouth chicks walking around. Yes, it was. So, what? 
I mean, I mean if you're gonna do it, I mean, at least get enhancements or something to. Get right? what? I don't know. I, I was just thinking about the gold teeth and bre big breasts, and it's throwing me off. Somebody else go to the, go to the next one, please. Cause... <laughs> but and then somebody got liposuction too. Yeah, yeah, one did. But it was so sad, Rachel. I researched these females, and one of them had the nerve on the day of her surgery was on Facebook talking about, "Oh Lord, please be with me as I go through this surgery." <laughs> you just stole somebody's car. <laughs> okay, I'm just looking at the picture now, and I see why they got. Did surgery. you really? See, now that's going to make me think about certain people when I look at their status. Are oh, you going to that surgery, huh? How'd you afford that? <laughs> okay, I can see why. Oh, okay. my gosh. I didn't know she did that. That's so trifling. I wonder if I know yeah. any of these people. So when it comes to, of course, they're going to go to jail for this, but um, they have to play restitution. So do you think that they're going to be able to keep their gold teeth and fake boots? Who gets gold teeth anymore? I don't know. Maybe they're trying to bring it back. Like, did they permanently get those? Or is that like a grill or something? So. Um, I mean, isn't that like a payment plan? Like you get maybe one tooth done now and come back and get the grill. I don't know how they work it out. Yes, I don't know either. But you know, gold teeth. These women are going to jail. I hope it was worth it, honey. Probably not. But BJ, there's something that we've been wanting to talk about for weeks, but we just never had a chance to talk about it. Um, trifling females, thirsty females in Atlanta. You were yes. telling me something about that. And since Cash swears that we are um, man bashing, maybe we can bring the women's issues to light. Well, yeah, I mean, if you look at it just now, uh, like with these women who stole a car, there's so many thirsty females, uh, and not just in Atlanta, everywhere, that they are willing to go above and beyond to get everything. I mean, they're thirsty for money, so you got your gold diggers, and they're thirsty for men. And then you got your people who are cheaters or who are going around messing up relationships. Even though it takes two to tango, you have a lot of aggressive females out here. I agree. I definitely agree. Like, there was this one thing. Patrick, I don't know if you remember this. Remember when uh, you weren't with me, but I know I called. Like, there's just certain people, guys, in your life that you know to call immediately because they're either going to make you feel better or, like, heighten up your anger. I can't remember what <laughs> you did, but I just know I called well, you. you. <laughs> Because remember when I, I went down, when I was at my last job, I was working at a TV station, and I went, I had to go to an event in Columbus, Georgia, and it was a kid's event, and I was doing marketing, and um, I was handling the um, cartoon character. It was Super Y. And so um, they had supplied us with the man to wear the costume. And so I remember the whole time his girlfriend, wife, whatever she was, was just kind of really eyeballing me the entire time from when we got him dressed and we were walking around. And so I was working the table and I could see out of the corner of my eye, she's arguing with the cartoon character. Like you see the little kids <laughs> waiting to get a picture and she's just fingering his face and all that other stuff. You ain't talking to me. Why aren't you talking to me? You trying to ignore me, huh? And so I just try to be nice. I walk up to her, I say, he's not allowed to talk. He's super wide. Like he can't speak. Come on, let's talk. <laughs> talk so i'm just trying to make small chat i said oh, i see i got your girls here how are they how old are they by the end of it i thought he did a great job i went and i gave him praises to the high heavens to the coordinator and everything i was at the table i'm packing up we about to leave now this chick wobbled her butt let me tell you she was into something about uh ghetto girls and what is it when they're pigeon toed Oh, yeah. So they flew for it. Yeah, she was pigeon toed. She wore these old, worn out leggings that were gray. She had that asymmetrical, y'all know that weave, this like short one on one side, but long on the other, but it's not really a swoop. It's just cut short. Yeah, and I like long. that. I like she that. had that. <laughs> like she had everything to smell trouble, but I'm giving this one the benefit of the doubt. Anyway, she crip walks her butt to me with the kids in tow. And she's like, what did you say about my man? What did you say to him? I heard you whispering to him. And I said, I was asking, was he hot in that costume and did he need water like I'm supposed to? And anyway, wow. she called herself fussing me out. That's my man. That's blah, 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 blah. Long story short, after I got so upset because I'm like, really, is it that serious? Are we that just hungry and I got to fight every chick over my man? I just, I ended up getting him fired because she shouldn't have been there. He was at work. And it's like, technically at this moment, your man works for me. So you probably shouldn't act that way. So enjoy your Christmas without your check. Anyways. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. So, you know, I feel like certain women need to tone it down. It, it is not that serious. I mean, not everyone. There are women who would take advantage of the situation, but not everyone is like that. And if you have to fight and constantly be 
paranoid about your man, maybe there's some issues in your relationship you need to work out. I agree, but you know how some people are. It's everybody's issue but their own. But anyway, Miss BJ, with all the craziness that's going on, what is the hashtag of the week? All right, all right. My hashtag for the week, you guys, is hashtag Mr. Clean. Because this week I have seen so much mess in the media. We need to clean it up. You got folks up here stealing boob jobs and teeth jobs, and Tiger up here hitting up the playground for his next date. They need to get their life together. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Hashtag Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean, child. Everybody's so messy. Absolutely. <laughs> Including those thirsty females in Atlanta. <laughs> Anyways, guys, you're listening to The Real with Rachel D. We have more show coming up for you. We have Brandy uh, begging and pleading. Keep it here. All right, everybody, that was Brandy begging and pleading. So welcome back to The Real with Rachel D. I'm being joined by Mr. Patrick, Cash Carter, and Miss BJ. Hey. Hi, guys. Oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> All right, guys, we're here to wrap up the show. But before we go, what are we getting into this weekend? Anybody? Who's going first? I don't, I don't I'm, I'm roll-tied it all week. Oh, you in Alabama, so nothing. But you know what's up. unfortunate? I cannot play the Powerball here, though. Oh, girl, I know. Well, I'll play for you. Thank you. And this, I'll leave this as record. So if we win, we split it. <laughs> you said it. Good job, BJ. Good deal. I'm like Tiger. Uh, what? Nothing. All right, guys. <laughs> so if you don't have anything to get into this weekend, you know the holidays were just around the corner. So there are still some things, if you're still in the holiday spirits, that you can get into. The Holiday Lights at Botanical Garden, which I love if you have never been, like Miss BJ has never taken advantage of the Atlanta Botanical Garden. That needs to be on your to-do list. <laughs> mm. Garden Lights Holiday Nights features one million colorful lights, costume characters, attractions, and snacks on the 30-acre Atlanta Botanical Garden. And uh, if you want to do something else at Fernbank Museum of Natural History, there is the Winter Wonderland, which celebrates Christmas, Hanukkah, and the festivals of lights and other cultures with bright lights, decorative trees, ornaments, and many more things at the Winter Wonderland celebration. You guys can find discount tickets and more information on events12.com. All right, guys, it's time to wrap up, but I want to tell you, listeners, make sure that you tune in every Friday because not only do we give you an amazing show, but we will have a lot of ticket giveaways. I have some great things. Let me see. What are some things I have? There is a few art festivals coming up. We have a um, streetcar party. Oh, what's that? It's, um, it's going to be in Atlanta. God, I forgot the rest of it. It, it has to do with the streetcars. It's almost like a um, pub where you jump from place to place. Oh, okay. But it's a party. You kind of jump from streetcar to streetcar or whatever. Okay. So I got tickets to give away to those. And, you know, next month is Valentine's Day. So we have some Atlanta Symphony Orchestra um, tickets for their Valentine's Day concert to give away. So make sure you guys listen here because we'll be giving them away on our social media, on Facebook, The Real with Rachel D. So any last words, my crew members? Um. Hmm. You know what? Just, just, just don't steal, y'all. Yeah. Don't steal. <laughs> <laughs> and keep your money. If you win the lottery, keep your money, y'all. Don't spend it all on some dead people. I agree. Pat? Or gold teeth or... <laughs> <laughs> or pay your child support. Yeah. Or that. Yeah, yeah, you gotta do that. Or keep off Twitter when you're in your fight with your baby's mother. Miss right. BJ? Hey, y'all, let's keep it clean. Let's stop this mess. 144 characters, don't do it. <laughs> Hashtag Mr. Clean. All right, guys, thank you for listening to The Real with Rachel D. Again, go on social media, show us some support, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and SoundCloud. And make sure you go to Facebook to keep an eye out on those ticket giveaways. We're going to leave you with some K. Michelle Cry, and we will see you next week.